Hey there, sports history fan. This is Ross Bliley, the host of the Pigskin Tales podcast. Are you looking for that perfect, unique gift for your sports-loving child or grandchild? Or maybe you're looking for one. Well, I got something very unique for you. It's a racket. It's the ultimate device for the ultimate fan. It's perfect for any time you need to make some noise. What it is, is a 7-inch compact megaphone. It's got 8 powerful adjustable LED lights, noisemakers. Plus, you can design it all you want to match your team's colors. So get on out there and let's get loud. Bring a racket to your next game or competition to cheer on your favorite team or athlete. To pick up your racket today, head to MyRacket.com. That's my r a k i t dot com. This podcast is part of the Sports History Network, your headquarters for the yesteryear of your favorite sport. You can learn more at sportshistorynetwork.com. The Rose Bowl. The game that inspired the college football bowl season has a long and storied history. The stadium itself is 100 years old, and in celebration of it, Pigskin Dispatch is assembling some of the top historians and authors to share the memories, people, and events that make the granddaddy of them all the special game that it is. Enjoy this Rose Bowl memory from pigskindispatch.com. Hello, my football friends. This is Darren Hayes of PigskinDispatch.com. Welcome once again to the Pig Pen, your portal to positive football history. And we are talking still about the Rose Bowl all month long. 40 days of Rose Bowl celebration, celebrating the venue's 100th anniversary. How many games and how many great things have happened from that uh, sports stadium? I can't even tell you, but we can talk about a lot of them. And today we, you know, we talked about uh, in a previous broadcast uh, about some of the great Rose Bowl games that played 19. 57 through 1961 and that 1961 uh, game we talked about you know it wasn't a very good game but there was something very interesting that happened and, and very memorable uh, it was possibly more for this incident as that game remembered uh, that occurred at a halftime intermission than for the gameplay on the field and we chat about that here in this episode Well, the Rose Bowl was played on Monday, January 2nd, 1961. It contained a fascinating secondary story. That year, that Washington Huskies team was pitted against the Minnesota Golden Gophers, as we talked about. At halftime, the Huskies were leading 17 to nothing, and their cheerleaders took the field to show the spectators in the stands uh, in a card stunt. Uh, which was a routine involving flip cards depicting various images for the audience to raise up in the air and for the viewing audience across the stadium or this time television to the witness. However, several students from the California Institute of Technology altered the card sent the, shown during the halftime break by making the Washington fans inadvertently spell out Caltech, the school where the pranksters attended. The prank had been described as the greatest collegiate prank of all time and received national attention. NBC broadcasts of the game to an estimated 30 million viewers across the United States. And one author wrote, quote, Few college pranks can be said to be more grandly conceived, carefully planned, flawlessly executed, and publicly dramatic, end quote, than the Great Rose Bowl hoax, as it is now called. Now, this has really got... It's a, a, kind of an interesting story, the lengths that these uh, youngsters went out to, to do to get this. It was a well-devised plan by the pranksters. The Caltech conspirators sent a contingent to Washington disguised as reporters to gain intel on how the Husky cheerleaders would set up the system of cards. The flattered cheer team was more than pleased to share their complex strategy to achieve the large Rose Bowl crowd's participation in their school spirit. The fake reporters took copious notes and returned to the plot their devious plan of halftime sabotage with their co-conspirators. 
and must have taken hours of preparation, but the conspirators carefully made their replacement cards, which were the same size and shape as the Washington cheerleaders prepared ones. The plot thickened when the Caltech students learned that the Husky cheerleading squad was invited to Disneyland on the Saturday before the Monday, January 2nd game. This was their opportunity to gain entrance into the hotel room of the Washington head cheerleader and place the forged cards in a place of, of the 2,232 original cards. When the Huskies cheer squad called out the signal numbers on game day to Washington supporters, the, a beaver head appeared rather than a Husky emblem in one section, while the word Caltech replaced the word Huskies that was planned by the cheerleaders. All was caught on the live TV coverage by N. NBC broadcasters who had been in contact with the University of Washington to fel- to televise this well-planned school spirit. And what they did is televised probably one of the biggest hoaxes in modern history, any that I can think of at a football game. And uh, we have some great photographs in newspaper articles on Pigskin Dispatch of the stunt. And it's a, it's really kind of a, a funny thing and probably not wasn't so much funny for the Washington folks that planned it all out. But Man, years later, just the devious enterprise that the, these Caltech students did, it's kind of genius, and you almost got to tip your hat off to them uh, for, you know, not so much for sabotaging the, the young ladies' uh, plans of uh, making this uh, a great cheer section, but uh, just the, the length that they had to do it. They probably had to do more planning than the cheerleaders did. So that is just a little bit of football history, a little side note, a little bit of lightheartedness uh, here as we celebrate the Rose Bowl. Something that happened at the Rose Bowl there in 1961, and we're glad you could join it. Hope you enjoy uh, this Rose Bowl all month long and football history each and every day. Uh, we'd love to bring it to you, and uh, we'd love to get your feedback. Pigskin Dispatch at G email.com and until tomorrow everybody have a great great iron day we're taking a peek over at the chains and the down marker it's fourth and long we're gonna have to punt the ball and get on out of here but we'll have another series tomorrow for your football history headlines so be sure to tune in we invite you to check out our website pigskindispatch.com not only to see the daily football history but to experience positive football with our many articles on the good people of the game as well as our own football comic strip cleat marks comics pigskindispatch.com is also on social media outlets facebook twitter instagram and don't forget the pigskin dispatch youtube channel to get all of your positive football news and history special thanks to the talents of mike and gene monroe as well as jason neff for letting us use their music during our podcast pigskindispatch.com is a proud affiliate of the sports history network the headquarters of sports yesteryear Hey there, Sports History fan. This is Arnie Chapman, a.k.a. the Football History Dude. And I hope that you enjoyed this recent episode presented by the Sports History Network and were able to learn some good old-fashioned sports history knowledge nuggets. I started the Sports History Network back in 2020 with the mission to help podcasters find a community of like-minded sports history nerds as well as helping aspiring podcasters to start their own shows. We have a little bit over 30 shows on the network right now covering all sorts of sports history, but as far as I'm concerned, we're just at the toothpick in the ocean moment, you know, that can't even figure it out because there's so much more coming. We wanted to create the ultimate headquarters for sports yesteryear, starting with Podcast Network and our website, but we're going to continue to move into other mediums as well. And here's the cool part, because we want you to be part of our team. So if you're interested in starting your own podcast, or maybe being a guest on one of our shows, Or who knows, maybe even write an article for us over on the website. Seriously, all you got to do is reach out to us on the contact page over at sportshistorynetwork.com. You can be as technologically savvy as a Neanderthal tapping on a stone trying to figure out this whole hieroglyphics thing back in the day. Again, it doesn't matter because even if you don't understand the whole podcast space, we have a production team that can pretty much help you out with doing everything. All you got to do, head over to sportshistorynetwork.com, head to the contact page, fill it out. That message goes right to me and I'll reach out to you as soon as I can. But for now, dude, I'm through if you're through.